Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about Freshities from ICM and this boxing is quite interesting because here we have, as you can see, uh, I would say it's the first time I see in ICM it's a limited edition and inside we will get 148 scale of UH 1G Arctic Cobra. So you might be wondering why it's 148. Well, because here we get the plastic watch was created together with a special hobby. So it will be released only in form of this uh, limited edition under ICM brand. And that's why it was interesting to take a closer look together. And of course, we have a commercial sample here. So it means this kit number 48299. Um, it's the final shape. And you will get exactly the same stuff as what you see in this video review by the way note also the box art which is quite nice here and the box size is approximately the same as what we had in the 130 second scale and that what made me a bit confused so here you can see comparison with my hand but again it's 148 it's not 130 second Next on the side here we have also some information about the real subject and also about the kit. So I will just check it for a second. We have 182 parts and length of the finished model will be 295 millimeters. While on the opposite side you can see three marking options which are included here. So as you can see they are quite colorful and in my opinion this build will be definitely noticeable once you assemble everything together and we will check all of these decals and markings later when we will be talking about the assembly manual and also about the decal sheet. Packaging is typical, it means that the top section or top cover is actually placed or secured in place with the help of the stickers as you can see so I have to cut through them and in the meantime I would like to use this uh, as an opportunity to remind you that you can support us with a small donation be it here on YouTube directly with a membership or maybe even with a like or with a small donation via PayPal on our website because we have really nice big red button which will guide you on how to make a donation to us and of course all this money will be used for uh, new kits to be reviewed or maybe for some new equipment which will allow us to show more in our videos be it reviews or some build reviews so now i'm trying to remove this top cover this is a traditional thing for acm sometimes it's really tight but as you can see that's a flexible cover printed cover which does not provide any protection and then we proceed with this sturdy white cardboard box which uh, keeps all parts intact and if I open it here we have plenty of space as you can see and we have this plastic spruce so let's move the box aside and it's a resealable plastic bag packaging I um, mean the bag style if we can say so is exactly the same as what we saw in the special hobby release so in case you watched our previous video review you will understand what i'm talking about and we are going to start with a clear sprue so here we have all the necessary parts for the canopy on this helicopter so let's zoom in and here you can see what i'm talking about so overall molding quality looks quite nice I'm not sure if we have masks included here, but ICM usually includes masks in templates at least, so it will be handy for such, I would say, large clear parts, especially if you plan to open the canopy on your model, then definitely cut your own masks, or maybe even get some aftermarket so that you'll get um, speed jump on this stage and you will be able to focus on something different next we continue with the small frames so here we have several frames which are dedicated to various external equipment on this helicopter as you can see it's a sprue g j and i and here we have various uh, missile launchers we have also some modules which will be attached onto the pylons and it's really great that we get all of this stuff in the standard package it means that you won't have to get it as a separate purchase and of course it will speed up the whole project because you won't have to search for some aftermarket 
Next we continue with one more thing, so here we have the Gatling gun and it is actually molded on the separate sprue, as you can see here we have all the necessary parts. What I really like here is that this main part is molded as a single piece part, it means you won't have any ugly seams or any other possible problems in this area and I think this is quite important even in 148 scale. I was saying that is valuable in 130 second, but I think here as well, so as you can see all details look good and there is nothing to complain about. Next, we continue with the Sprue H. So more of these missile launchers. As you can see here, we have to assemble this, uh, I would say, bodies out of two halves. As far as I remember, yeah, we have the guiding pins inside, so it should be easy to align them together. But of course, pay attention to the possible gaps between these two halves. But I think that's something what is expected in such design. Next we continue with the sprue E. So here we have cockpit parts and I think we should zoom out a bit because not all parts are fitting in. So here we have the cockpit 4. We also get the pilot seats here, some controls, some internal panels. Also here we have some parts for the interior as far as you can see. So all of this stuff coming as a standard out of the box features. And of course you can add more by getting some aftermarket P. In my opinion it's completely worth it because in 148 scale with such large canopy it will be quite a visible upgrade and of course it will make your model a bit more visually appealing and interesting for the viewer. Next we continue with the sprue B. So here we have the rails here landing gear rails in two types. We also have some parts for the front turret and we also have some parts for the air intake. With these two landing skis I think it's really great that they are coming as a single piece parts. As you can see they have the right alignment so it's just a matter of combining them together. And if you flip it over here for example in the air intake you can see that there are guiding elements which will help you with overall alignment of these things. Next we continue with the sprue D. Here we have some tail parts. So again, external features look really nice. We have rice rivets here and also recessed panel lines. Note that this, uh, I would say, special guiding elements will help you to align it with the fuselage. And of course, be sure to pick up the right version because these are different. We also get some parts for the cockpit, some parts for the air intakes, nozzles, and also for the tail rotor. And if I flip it over, of course, inside this tail house we have guiding elements. So again, even such large parts will be easy to align together. Next, we have one more narrow sprue. So this one is a sprue C. Here we get various mix of parts. So as you can see, molding quality looks fine. Be careful with these thin antennas because it's quite easy to break them and then it's not such a enjoyable stuff to repair them. Next, we also have the towing rack here, which is quite nice bonus because, I mean, this is something not that obligatory in a helicopter kit, yet manufacturer included it into the standard package, so that's appreciated. And one more sprue. It's actually the biggest one in the kit, it's the sprue A, and obviously here we have the fuselage halves. So as you can see, both are molded together with the tail, but as you remember, tail fins were molded separately. The same can be said about this nose area. And also note that the lower section of the fuselage is molded separately. We have the main rotor molded as a single piece part. Again, be careful while separating it. But overall, I like external features here. In 148, it's a bit smaller model, as you can see. And if I flip it over here inside, we have guiding elements again. So pretty much standard design as what we saw on the other parts. And that's really great. Next, we have some decals here, of course. They are hidden in the assembly manual, but here they are. Let's close the lenses, zoom in. So here we have decals for the instrument panel. We also have some decals for the shark mouth, some stencils. Obviously for the cockpit, in my opinion, these decals will not be enough. That's why I'm saying get some aftermarket, which will add more features. And you will only 
benefit from such addition, not only you but your model as well. And next we continue with assembly manual, so here I have to zoom out and you can see that we have assembly manual in form of color printed brochure, short history note and technical specifications, also colors chart. Next we continue with the parts map, so parts map here red color means that these parts will not be used but still not that many parts are actually untouched. Next we start assembly process with the cockpit. So here we also have to decide which uh, marking option we will be copying because as far as you can see there are some modifications depending on the marking you choose. Next we continue also with some fuselage panels. So here we have quite a smart design as you can see all of the possible gaps are actually closed with the separate panels except of this tail area. But that's something what we can live with in my opinion. Next we continue with the side wings and also engine nozzle. Here we work on the nose turret and also assemble this Gatling gun. Again depending on the marking option, so pay attention. Here we work on the landing gear and tail rotor. Then we work on the canopy, so for the canopy you can even install some decals as you can see. And also manufacturer shows what you should do if you would like to have an open canopy. That's quite a nice bonus. Of course the towing rack is also here. We have the masking templates, that's good. And also loadout schemes so that you have the proper loadout for your helicopter. Here we continue with first two marking options. So from 1969 and 1970s and one more from 1973. Quite bright ones, this one even has the shark mouth. So something to choose out from and of course nobody stops you from searching for some alternative aftermarket markings But this thing should be already available. You can get it for example in Modelimex. In my opinion This is a great release for modelers for whom 130 second scale was big But they still would like to have these markings and of course I'll be happy to hear your opinion about this release Do not forget to write it here in the comment section below if you like this video press the like button subscribe to our YouTube channel And I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today and bye.